Hello everyone, welcome to Shell Black Whiteboard where we help you get the most out of the Salesforce platform. I'm Shell Black, president of shellblack.com and Salesforce MVP. The topic today is cases, so let's jump in. So let's first start with a definition of a case. And I am going to keep this a little broad because over my experience working with my clients, cases are pretty flexible and can be applied in a lot of different ways. So I'm going to define cases as a method for handling or tracking a problem, issue, request, or question to resolution. A little broad, it, cases are a standard object, and if you've heard me before, standard object has standard fields that come out of the box. You can add custom fields, you can have multiple page layouts, record types, validation rules. Cases are the core of the service cloud, which is a big offering. So if you kind of think of opportunities as the kind of the core module inside the sales cloud, cases for customer service is kind of the core object inside the service cloud. So to kind of help you understand the different ways and the flexibility in which you can use cases, let's, let's walk through some scenarios. So the one that I think most people think about is I'm supporting my customers and they're calling with questions about products, maybe billing or how do I do a return. So really you've got a group of people fielding cases and creating cases that are issues coming from your customers. You can also use this as an internal help desk or an internal way to handle requests coming from your internal users or employees. Maybe I've got a provisional login or reset a password or uh, maybe you want to track the process of onboarding a, an employee through cases. Um, also that come up quite a bit are kind of back office requests to help with customer requests. So let's say that we're a financial institution, maybe a bank, wealth management shop, we do stock trades or maybe we're an insurance company. And so maybe you want to have a more formal way to track these requests other than a task, because the task isn't quite sufficient enough. So examples of that back office request that could be handled may be, hey, I need to perform a trade, I need to open a financial account, uh, maybe I need to do a change of address on one of my accounts, maybe I need to do a change of beneficiary on an insurance policy, and you want to have a little bit more information that's a little bit more special than just a task you want to make sure that that request gets tracked to resolution. So cases could be a good way to handle that. Let's also talk about some special features that are available with cases. Um, so for example, assignment rules. So what an assignment rule is, is when a case gets created, you can have an assignment rule evaluate the information on that case and decide who should work it, either a specific user, maybe tier one, tier two, or assign that to a queue, which is really an unassigned bucket. So you could have a new case queue, a tier one queue, a tier two queue, so maybe you're a tier one support agent, the, the question's too complex for you, you don't know who in tier two should get the case, you just assign it to a queue and then someone who works that queue can grab that case and start working it. It's really ownership of the record. Escalation rules. So escalation rules are really helpful to make sure that something doesn't fall through between the cracks. So uh, maybe if a case has been opened and a new status for three days, that's too long and you want that case escalated to a team lead or maybe you want the case escalated and reassigned to a manager. Again, something sitting out there too long, want to make sure a, a case doesn't fall through the cracks. Escalation rules are a great way to dynamically and proactively reassign and escalate those cases. Entitlements. So what entitlements are is say contractually when working with a client that you, you've come up with an SLA or a service level agreement that says, when you open up a ticket with us, we're gonna give you some type of initial response or initial acknowledgement of that case within four business hours. And maybe contractually you're obligated to have that case resolved within say five business days. So those kind of timing milestones are handled with entitlements uh, inside Salesforce. Um, another feature that you can use is a knowledge base, very cool feature. Um, a knowledge base is really a, a library of articles, knowledge articles that you write. Uh, some people call them FAQs and they're, they're used to help speed cases to resolution. So maybe you have a new agent that doesn't know how to uh, handle a certain problem. They can search the knowledge base or as you're filling out the details of the case, the knowledge base can be recommending articles it thinks are a good match based on the information you're capturing in the case. So knowledge bases can be used internally, you can put them on a community, but really the whole idea of a knowledge base is to help speed to resolution and maybe even deflect cases from even getting opened if you had them on a community. So a pretty cool feature. So let's flip to the other side of the board, hit some other things. Let's talk about the channels of how cases come in and how they are created. 
uh, very commonly they're created manually. So maybe you're on um, a call center and you're taking a request or a question or a problem from a customer and being on the phone, you're just gonna manually type in that case and open that case. There's some automated methods on how cases get created. You can have an email address on your domain, maybe support at yourcompany.com, and sending an email to that email address, Salesforce can automatically create a case. It can look at the sender of who sent that email and try to match it up against a contact in the database inside Salesforce to automatically open that case up against that contact. Let's say that they sent an email from an email address you're not aware of, your Yahoo or Gmail or personal email address, the case still gets created, uh, but it's, it's not related to a contact. Um, kind of a neat feature of email to case is you can send attachments through emails and those attachments will come in and get associated to that case automatically. Another vehicle to automatically create a case is through your website. So a quick HTML form, very similar to a web to lead form, is a web to case form where they can put in their name, email address, company, short description of the process, problem that they're having, hit submit, that will come in and automatically get created as a case. Um, you can have cases created on a community, so a community is a special license from Salesforce, but you can have uh, a portal or a community where your end customers can come in, browse the knowledge base, look at old cases, and open a case and kind of self-help. And so instead of having an agent involved in creating that case, the end user client can create their own case on a community. Another method um, is Live Agent. Live Agent is a special license from Salesforce, but it basically is live chat on your website. And through a chat conversation, an agent can go ahead and kick off a case and maybe that they can't answer the question right there on the live chat, or maybe they wanna log that as an issue and create a case from that uh, chat dialogue. Okay, standard fields are over 40 standard fields on cases. I don't have time to go through them all. So I'm gonna hit the big ones that are, you're, gonna, you're gonna come across most likely. Two lookup fields that are very key, one to the account, the company, one to the contact. So really you wanna open cases against the contact who, who made that service request. And by default, that contact typically works for an account. Um, there's an auto number field called case number. So every time you click the new button and create a case, Salesforce is gonna assign it automatically a number and increment it by one every time you create a new case, very similar to uh, quotes have a unique number, orders have unique numbers, cases also have unique numbers. Uh, a case owner, um, it's the record owner, it can be a user or as we've alluded to previously, a queue. Subject line and description, I kinda wanna talk about together. So think of this in the analogy of an email. An email has a subject line which is a short snippet about what the email is about and then the body of the email has, has more narrative. So same thing, the subject line of a case is a short narrative of what the issue is. In the descriptions field, it has a more comprehensive narrative of the details about that case. Let's roll into a handful of pick list fields uh, that I think are pretty important. So origin is really the channel that the case was created from. So it could be the web, email, phone, really good for reporting. Type is a pick list field that you can use to help segment or categorize your cases. So was this a case about a problem? Was it a feature request? Was it about training? Was it a doc documentation? Was it about billing? It's just a way for you to categorize your cases. Status, key field, this is the life cycle field. So we've talked about life cycle fields before, the lead status field on leads, opportunity stage um, is other, another example of a life, life cycle. So it's where is this case in its life cycle? Is it we just open it to a new case? Or is it on hold? We're waiting on the customer for more information. Have we escalated to another group? Has it been resolved? Or, or has it just been closed out? Again, your life cycle field. And lastly, the case reason. So when you close out a case, typically you will give it a disposition and close it out with a reason of, of why that case came to be. Was it because there was inadequate information on our website? Maybe the uh, documentation on the product that we ship was uh, inaccurate, needs to be updated. Was it a problem, feature request, existing problem, new problem? However you, you want to do a disposition on that product, on that, on that case is typically through this pickless field called reason. All right, case is a huge topic. There's a lot of associated products. There's a lot of functionality. Again, cases are the core of the service cloud. So this is really more of an introduction to cases, but I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any feedback on how we're doing or want to reach out, you can hit me on Twitter, shell underscore black, or you can send me an email at whiteboard at shellblack.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. We hope to see you soon.